day, Planned Parenthood workers serve more than 8,000 people in more than 600 clinics across the country. In 2016, nearly two and a half million people turned to the organization for health care. This came amid increased scrutiny of its leadership in the political arena. We saw women, people of color, rise up to speak in favor of reproductive rights and access to health care. But on the other hand, less than 24 hours after the elections, the Trump administration came out with new rules that would allow employers to deny women birth control coverage. I can't believe it's 2018 and we're still debating birth control. I am asking Congress to pass legislation to prohibit the late-term abortion of children who can feel pain in the mother's womb. If women do not have the right to choose what to do with our own bodies, we will not be living in a democracy. When I think about women's health care and women having access to safe and affordable health care and having full control over our bodies, I think that's inextricably linked to the struggle and the fight that trans people have to have access to safe and affordable health care and full and complete autonomy over our bodies. We are in this fight together whether we want to be or not. When we first came to this country, my mother didn't have health care anywhere else. And Planned Parenthood was there for her, just as it's there for women across the country to provide cancer screenings, to provide birth control. We do more to prevent unintended pregnancies every year than any other organization. We wear white to unite against any attempts by the Trump administration to roll back the incredible progress women have made in the last century. The president isn't used to people refusing to back down to him. He is not Wolf, and those who know him say the president is especially thrown off if a powerful woman challenges him. And until now, Mr. Trump has really never dealt at length with a woman as powerful and politically savvy as Nancy Pelosi. So today, I have one last thing to ask you. Don't stop. Don't stop fighting. Don't stop speaking out. Don't stop standing with Planned Parenthood, with women, with people of color, with LGBTQ people, with immigrants, with young people, with patients, with doctors, with those who are shut out of power and silenced and ignored by our leaders. Tuesday brought celebrations across the U.S. for the record-breaking number of women who made history with their victories. We are seeing people rise up in record numbers in favor of women's health care. Diversity extended beyond their gender. The rising women's movement, not just here but around the world, is saying, wait a minute, if the authorities don't look like the country by sex and race and so on, do we really have a democracy? They ran and won in unprecedented numbers over 30 seats in the house. What we believe at Planned Parenthood is that a patient who comes into our doors should get the same treatment, should have the same opportunities, no matter what they need. Title 10 is a program that provides 4 million low-income women and families with affordable birth control, cancer screenings, STI tests, and the Trump administration came out with a gag rule saying that doctors now cannot provide referrals for women for abortion care. I mean, this is direct censorship. It's putting a gag on doctors and forcing us to withhold information from our patients. We at Planned Parenthood would never gag our doctors. We would never force our doctors to lie to our patients. And that's why we are fighting this gag rule with everything we have, including we just recently filed a lawsuit to sue the Trump Pence administration against this illegal and unethical rule. doctor who is a woman who is one in Planned Parenthood who finished college and is an immigrant, you are literally Trump's nightmare. 